and welcome back everyone to the video series dedicated show on MTV that is premiering its 40th season. That's right, we're talking about the challenge season 40, Battle of the Eras. And this season, technically, it's officially started because I am doing a review and a recap for a launch special, Episode Zero. Now, we've gotten some launch specials and Episode Zeros for some recent seasons, but this was by far the best. Even though that's probably a low bar to cross, this one was the best. And it's not just because TJ was dressed to the nines, but because Davon and Devin were also there. And we got official words that Devon and Devin will both be hosting the official challenge podcast for this season. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, as I mentioned, this launch special was better, but it was also different than the launch specials of like last season. Essentially, the first half of this launch special is just everybody getting to hang out mingle around, have some hors d'oeuvres, see who else is on the season. They start at a different location. Everybody's dressed up, looking good. It's all, it almost feels like a party to celebrate the challenge turning 40. It feels less like the beginning of a season and more so like a red carpet watch party event. And to me, I love that vibe because this is a big moment. This is the challenge 40. They introduced every era gave every era their time. They had a photographer and a special place for everybody to do their oneers, spin arounds to the camera when they were getting introduced, when their era was getting introduced. I loved that touch and I loved all the clips that they showed because they showed some clips that I did not expect, like Naya going after Nani in Battle of the X's 2. When that clip came up, I was like, yo, this isn't something we've seen on MTV in quite some time, but here is MTV embracing a lot of these classic clips, and I just thought that it was hitting on all cylinders. Granted, they didn't have to do much to make this launch special really good with the cast that they have, but I feel like production had a vision, they knew what they wanted to accomplish with this launch special, and they got it done. Mission accomplished. Shout out to the editing team for giving CT like the first confessional of this entire launch special. You know the fan favorite. So having CT up front and center was a great choice. As well as seeing these clips from like Inferno 1, Gauntlet, Battle of the Seasons. You just gave us confirmation that you have all this footage and you're willing to show clips of it. But why isn't it on Paramount Plus? I need answers and I want them now. As we go through this entire launch special, Bananas is hovering around era one. I feel like Bananas has way more camaraderie, way more friendship, way more in common with the era one men than say the era two men. He even says at one point that he really wants to be on era one. What I found very interesting was the exchange between Rachel and Bananas, where Bananas looks at Rachel and says, can we play nice this season? And Rachel says, of course, yeah, we can. And Bananas says, we'll see how long that lasts. Which, I don't know if that's foreshadowing for anything, so let's keep our eyes between the Rachel and Bananas. I felt like this launch special was a little heavy-handed on foreshadowing some of the relationships that we could be seeing over the course of the season. I kind of wish they would just let everything happen organically, and then we could see it progress throughout the rest of the season. You have Brad talking about how great it is to see Emily after all these years. They even have this impeccable edit of Brad and Emily having this like conversation with each other, which of course was taking random sound clips and posting them together to sound like they were having a conversation with one another. I feel like this confirms that there's gonna be something going on between them. Era one is looking good. They call themselves the heavy hitters. Era two is looking really good. I think their intro goes really hard and I loved it. Bananas steps up and says that he feels that the women should take over for their team and their team dynamic because they're not just some of the strongest players on their team, their era two team. They are some of the strongest players in the entire house. What are we the men going to do? You know, let them take over, let them handle it because we got a stack cast over here. We do see this like conversation between Kara and Laurel. Kara believes that Laurel is cool with Kara now because Laurel was able to win All-Stars 4, get her second challenge win. So now it feels like Laurel has won a final over Kara, has won eliminations over Kara, that she has the upper hand, that 
everything could be fine now. And they do seem kind of friendly at this moment. And then we hear from Polly, who says that he hopes that Kara realizes on this season that there will never be a friendship between her and Laurel. And Polly even goes as far to call Laurel trash. Era 3 gets introduced, and we find out that there is still some beef, at least on Corey's end of things, that there is still beef between Corey and Tony after season 32's Pasta Gate. In this long special, we do not hear Tony mention anything of pasta or gates, fences, or penne at all. So maybe this is only one-sided and Corey is looking at Tony like I've never gotten over it. So Corey is gonna keep his eyes on Tony the entire time. We find out that one person is missing and all of Era 3 is kind of wondering who could be their 10th and final player. Well, we know who that 10th and final player is because of the cast reveal as well as all the promos and trailers and everything that it's Jordan. But I'm sure in the moment they're just like trying to like mingle and everything, but in the back of their heads, they're thinking like, okay, we're the only team with nine players. Who's our fifth and final guy? And one final thing that I thought was really, really awesome to see was they got a special video for Leroy where Cam saying how crazy it is that they met each other back in season 31 vendettas and look how the challenge brought us together and helped create the family that we have today. And it was a very touching moment. I loved it. I also love that they were able to get Cam on the season. Now she's not era three, she's era four, but I thought it was a great touch. And finally, era four gets announced and they try to have this like nice moment of cheersing each other and being like era four woo and the entire place just starts to boo them because i feel like in that moment the fandom was also booing we find out that michelle during the off season was trying to help bring Norris and Olivia back together, that they're gonna be on this team together, that after what happened in season 39, that maybe it could be water under the bridge. Now we do see some sneak peeks of some of the daily challenges that are gonna happen over the course of the season. Now I will be going much deeper into these clips in the super trailer breakdown video that's gonna be posted on Friday. I'm gonna take all the season clips that were in this launch special, add them to whatever the Super trailer showed at the end of this launch special and I'm gonna put them all together and we're just gonna dissect everything. We have this nice moment between Rachel and Amanda where Rachel is like, I'm so happy you're here on this season and Amanda says that is an honor to hear that from the OG Mean Girls. To me, that was just a really nice moment of these two competitors who have never played on a challenge season together but like giving the respect to one another. And we even go from this moment to Rachel getting up on the bar, doing the night one speech, a speech that we normally see like Johnny Bananas and CT do, but Rachel gets up and wants to give a toast to all the women on this season and how just like, badass all the women on this season are and how good this season looks. I felt like Rachel crushed it. TJ crashes the party after that and tells everybody that they will be seeing him very, very soon. But now it's time to see the house, which this house is a giant castle. Don't mind that Durrell has no idea how to say Gryffindor from Harry Potter, but everybody comes running into this house trying to grab their beds. You got Devin and Tori like, Dave, Dave. Somebody who's taking everything in was CT who was slowly walking through the house. Now we know that's like CT's MO. He's never the one to run into the house running for a bed. He always leisurely walks into the house, gets the best bed. But there's something different about this house where there's a whole bunch of season banners up. There's like all of this like, custom artwork from all these memorable moments from all different types of seasons. You got the CT backpack, Brad's wedgie, the flipping of the kill cards, and more specifically, Derek and CT kind of linger around DM's picture from season 13's The Duel when she took her wig off for the first time. And you could just tell that CT is not taking anything for granted. He's taking all of these moments in one at a time, really soaking it up because I, I get it. You never know when 
the last hurrah is. Maybe it is this season. You never know how many seasons everybody has who's on this season is going to have moving forward. Heck, you don't even know how many seasons of the challenge there will be after this MTV season 40. So I just thought it was a really, really nice moment. I felt like they honored DM in a very nice way. I felt like this house looks impeccable. I will be doing a house tour on my patreon.com slash angelcakevids during the Tiny Table Talk live stream on Saturday night. So I'm looking forward to that. All the eras have to room together. There is no bunk beds. We also find out that Amanda and Tori still do not like each other. How shocking. Tori is taking some digs at Amanda. Amanda is talking to Devin saying that she will work for the team. She will be a good teammate, but she will not be friends with Tori, which I think is fair. Not only is the inside of the house impeccable and ginormous, but out back with the pool, this looks like a resort. That is wild. This has to be one of the biggest challenge houses they've ever had on the show. It's also at this point that we get to see some flirting between Olivia and Theo, we also hear that Michelle thinks Devin is funny. Like, really, really funny. We get some really nice moments here where I just mentioned Amanda. She's talking with Cara. Amanda now has a newfound respect for Cara Maria. I think on USA 2, Amanda and Polly got really close with each other. They were able to bond and have a lot of conversations. To the point where, coming on to this season, I think it opened Amanda's mind and heart to where it's like, okay, well maybe Cara and I can be friends if me and Polly are friends. Also, I think there's an old adage that said, the enemies of my enemy is my friend. And knowing that Cara and Tori do not get along with each other also helps Amanda be like, yeah, I could like Cara if she doesn't like Tori. Another really nice moment was Naya and Laurel talking with each other. We find out that Naya may not be in the best physical condition and she is still trying to strengthen her lungs each and every day. We find out that she was addicted to her vape to a point where it hospitalized her and she got blood clots in her lungs. She's trying to live healthier. She's trying to do better. She also developed panic attacks and a panic disorder from it. And I thought Naya was incredibly brave and vulnerable to share all of that personal information with us. Um, I will be rooting for Naya over the course of the, I was already gonna be rooting for Naya, but hearing her story, I was just like, oh man, this is incredible. This is the point in the launch special where the night was dying down. I'm actually quite surprised that everybody seemed to be asleep by 2.30 a.m. And the final member, the 40th player, arrives fashionably late, and that is Jordan in his white cowboy hat, walks in, strolls through the house, looking at everything, getting a lay of the land as everybody else is sleeping. Jordan says he was late because he was flying in directly after a race because he is a professional race car driver. He told TJ that he was definitely in on playing this season, that he will be there, but he worked it out with production that he would come in. It just would be later than maybe they would have wanted and he wouldn't be able to make it to the big old launch party. This moment of him arriving late was really, really cool. I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of it was kind of awesome, but the stage is set. I felt like this launch special gave us a good amount of information from like social cues and what to expect from everybody and maybe what people are thinking about other players as well as maybe who's open to work with other people. So I think that this is very interesting. I think it sets it up for a very interesting season moving forward. Now, this launch special does end with the Super Trailer, which was released on Wednesday afternoon. On Friday morning, August 9th, I will be dropping a breakdown to that Super Trailer. I'll be going frame by frame. That's it. We are done with episode zero, and we have less than a week for episode one's premiere. I cannot wait. I am so excited. I am super excited for this season. But now I turn it over to you. What do you think about this launch special? Did it get you more hyped for this upcoming season? What was your favorite part? And who will you be rooting for? Let me know down in the comment section below. Who's your favorite? What's your favorite era? Let me know down in the comment section below. I want to hear what you have to say. I now want to give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakebids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone who's watching this video up to this point. I'll be back really, really soon with more Challenge 40 content, more challenge content, more content in general. 
But until then, peace.